Ready to rock? Okay, then let's delve into the algorithmic framework of conflict-driven no-good learning. I call this a framework because it's not a single algorithm, it's rather uh, several algorithms as you see here and we will actually look at these algorithms in turn. So as such, keep in mind that it may be good for you actually to, to go back and forth, not only in the video, but also have the slides at hand, because sometimes I first talk about the intuition, then we look at the algorithm, and then actually it may be good for you actually to go back. Ah, what did he say when he talked about the intuition? How does this work together? And then afterwards, we also make some remarks. Actually, this is of course easier in class, in a dialogue. So just keep in mind that Sometimes you will not able to grasp the whole idea just because I'm too abstract or too concrete. So you may have to go back and forth and perhaps we will do this too. Anyway, so let's get started with the actual search procedure. The overall approach rests upon unit propagation on no goods. But these are not only completion and loop no goods, but also conflict no goods recorded by the algorithm on the fly. And we'll come to this later. The other characteristic thing actually of conflict-driven constraint learning is that it does not only use unit propagation to compute the deterministic consequences, but also each unit resulting literal is associated uh, with the no good from which it is derived. So it also, the algorithm also keeps track on the, the relation between the unit resulting literal and the no good from which it was derived. And this is very important because we need this afterwards to, well, to derive a nice representation of a conflict that is a conflict no good. Okay, now one thing actually that is particular to ASP is that while the completion no goods are polynomial in the atoms and rules in the program, there may be an exponential number of loop no goods. Hence, while we actually compile a program into its completion no goods, we cannot do, do so actually with uh, the loop no goods because we may face a, a, an explosion in space. Hence, the way the algorithm works, and this is actually detailed in the propagation later on, is that the loop no goods are only recorded on demand and actually whenever an unfounded set is encountered. So actually these dynamic no goods here contain, in the basic case, two types of no goods, the conflict no goods and the loop no goods stemming from unfounded sets. So as a result, actually the algorithm as such does not carry around these loop no goods, but only the dynamic no goods and of course the completion no goods. Loop no goods do not really play a role in the algorithm, only when unfounded sets are detected, they are needed to represent the no goods representing the unfounded set, or more or less the, no, the, the loop no goods that result from a set having been unfounded, right? And actually, just to, 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 to uh, remark this as well, is there's not only an exponential number of loop no goods, there's also an exponential number of conflicts. So actually, the, this is actually why they are both bundled in the dynamic no goods because the conflict as well as the unfounded sets, may, there may be an exponential number of each of them. So you may now ask, oh, uh, how, do, how, how to face this? Well, the thing is, uh, we only have to keep a linear number of no goods in the system. And, and these are actually the ones that we need to track the deterministic consequences. And well, keep in mind, in, what we have to track are all the no goods that have been used for unit propagation. And hence, we, we, this is proportional to the number of literals in the assignment. So we have our assignment, right? And each, each uh, unit resulting literal there is associated with a no good. And these no goods have to be kept in memory. The other ones we can forget and we have to forget them because there may be an exponential number in the worst case. And believe me, um, forgetting or deletion of no goods is an art by itself. But again, I zip it here. I just wanted to point out again that these dynamic no goods actually grow and shrink depending on, on, on what is currently learned or what is derived, but also sometimes, sometimes things have to be forgotten. And the sources of this are the conflicts and the unfounded sets. Okay, this is more or less uh, the basis that is unit propagation on these types of no goods here. And now let's see actually what happens when a conflict actually occurs. When solving starts, we start from an empty assignment. Let's assume the empty assignment is here. 
Then we start unit propagation and we deterministically assign truth values to variables until we reach a fixed point of unit propagation. Because at that point we cannot calculate any new truth values for variables. Then we pick a variable that we couldn't assign a truth value so far. We pick a truth value and assign it to this variable. This is called a non-deterministic choice. And then propagation resumes. We assign um, deterministically truth values to variables until we reach a fixed point. We do another choice. Propagation happens. Choice happens. Propagation happens until we reach one of two outcomes. So either we get a solution, but that's not so interesting right now, or we hit a conflict. And this actually means that a no good has been violated, which in turn means that the no good has been found as a subset among the current assignment. That is somehow, somehow on our trip from the empty assignment to where we are right now, all the, all the literals of these no goods are more or less contained somewhere, perhaps here, 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 spread over the whole, over the whole assignment, right? Such a no good is called a conflict no good. I repeat, a conflict no good is a no good that is contained in the current assignment. Okay, so once this situation happens, a conflict is detected and we have a first conflict no good in our hand. And then we launch a process that consists of four steps. Now, the first step is the thinking step. We analyze the conflict and what we actually do is we take the original conflict no good and we transform this into other conflict no goods until we obtain a conflict no good that has a nice property. And this nice property actually is that is if we remove everything up to the last choice that we made, then we know that this last conflict no good is ready for unit propagation. So what we could actually do, we could just clear the last uh, level until the last choice we made and we could do backtracking and add this guy by adding this guy, doing, uh, applying uh, unit propagation and we could continue. But the, the property that this conflict no good is unit resulting or could lead to unit propagation could actually be higher up as well. So what we do actually, we take the result of this analysis process this conflict no good with this nice property, we take it under our arm, right, and jump up in our assignment to the last point actually where this guy uh, gives us a unit resulting literal. Then actually we take this out of our arm, right, add it to the problem specification, and keep in mind, we've already been there, but we had to stop unit propagation, had to make a choice because we couldn't propagate anymore. But now we add this new no good, and this will immediately lead to propagation and we resume, we resume um, propagation at that point. This is more or less the, the overall idea of CDNL or conflict-driven no-good learning and we will look at this in different disguises. And again we just do yet another iteration where I will put a little bit more detail to the, to the four steps and this perhaps in a less comical way. Anyway, good. So first let's look at how to analyze a conflict. Conflict analysis is actually a transformation process. So we start with our original conflict no good and we keep transforming it until we obtain a conflict no good that has a unique implication point, the, the so-called UIP. Anyway, what does this mean? Well, being a conflict no good means that all literals in the no good are contained in the current assignment. Now, a conflict no good with a unique implication point is a conflict no good that has only one literal since the last choice was made. And keep in mind, when we remove all the literals since the last choice, then actually this no good is ready for unit propagation. And this is actually the property that we are looking for. Now, once we have found such a conflict no good, we learn it, right? So we add it to our dynamic no goods and then we back jump to the earliest level where this no good is still unit resulting, where this no good still yields, um, yields a unit resulting literal. And then we, when we are there, well, we just perform unit propagation and we assert the unit resulting literal. And that's it, right? 
So these are the four steps that we do whenever we encounter a conflict. Now let's finally look at what happens actually or what makes us terminate the procedure. CDNL-driven search terminates with one of two outcomes. Either a stable model of the logic program is obtained, and this means we obtain an assignment that is total, that is all atoms and bodies have been assigned a truth value, and no no good, neither a completion nor a loop no good is contained in this assignment. And these guys of assignment represent solutions of our sets of no goods. The other output actually is that the logic program is unsatisfiable, it has no stable model, and this is indicated by obtaining a conflict no good that actually appears between the empty assignment and the very first choice. And hence it is independent of any choices, and this tells us actually that the program um, the original program is unsatisfiable because after all what we do is we take the no-goods of the original program in this strip here and deduce what we can obtain from the original specification without making any assumptions, without making any non-deterministic choices. And if we obtain a conflict no-good, all of whose literals are obtained in this stretch here, this indicates uh, that the original program is unsatisfiable. Okay, so this more or less then terminates this type of slide, right? I summarize everything here again. So this may actually be the, the thing you may want to look at when we now uh, delve into the itchy gritty details of the actual algorithm. So here it is, the CDNL based search algorithm for stable models. Actually at this level of abstraction there's no real difference to the CDCL based uh, algorithm used in satisfiability testing. The only thing actually that we do here is we use no goods while in satisfiability testing they are using clauses. But they are more or less the same thing at this level of the of abstraction, right? Anyway, so the input of our algorithm is a normal logic program and the output is either a stable model or the information that that our program at hand has actually no stable model that it is unsatisfied. Now, uh, let's first actually look at the variables initialized here at the top. So we have here the assignment, which is the empty assignment at the beginning. Recall that this assignment ranges over the atoms in the program as well as the bodies in the program or the auxiliary variables representing these bodies. Then we have here our um, dynamic no goods, which are of course empty at the beginning. And here's a new variable. This is the decision level. You may actually re uh, recall from well, just a few, uh, the last slide actually, <laughs> that we start with an empty assignment, right? And then we propagate, do a decision, propagate, do a decision. And this variable DL counts the decisions that we make. And it actually assigns to each atom assigned after a decision, the respective decision level. So more at the beginning, the decision level is zero. Then all uh, atoms that result from unit propagation are also at decision level zero, then the first choice is made and this then gets decision, this is then associated with decision level one, just as all other uh, unit resulting literals. And this continues like this, right? So this more or less is a counter that identifies at which level, uh, with respect to which choice uh, all the literals were made. Okay, and then we have this uh, loop that we already saw before on these more abstract algorithms. So we start as before with uh, propagation, right? This is uh, unit propagation as well as propagation uh, with respect to unfounded sets. So here's again uh, a first difference with respect to satisfiability testing. And then once we have the result of this, so we have obtained actually a new uh, assignment, hopefully an extended assignment, and perhaps we also got some loop no goods out of it, uh, then we analyze the result of, of the initial propagation step, right? So here we have a conflict, so we actually found a no-go that is in the assignment. Here we, well, we have no conflict, but we have obtained a total assignment. This means here we have received a solution and we, give, we return this to our user. Uh, and last but not least here we have, had, we have a situation where we have no conflict, and, but we have yet unassigned uh, variables and here we make then a choice and continue with our loop. Let's actually stay here a little bit and then co come to the bulk part, the, the, the conflict analysis in, in a sec, right? So once we are here, 
repeating myself now, we have not encountered a conflict and we have not yet a complete assignment. That is, there are still variables in the assignment that have obtained no choose value. So what we do is we select one such variable and a truth value that we decide to assign to it. Actually in CLASP, when it is doing ASP solving, it uses actually false as the default, while actually in SAT solving it uses another heuristics. Just as a side remark, I zip it, right? Anyway, so choose a variable, choose the truth value. This is what happens here, and then we have here assigned literal. And uh, then we also augment the, fam the infamous counter for on the decision level here, right? So we augment this guy. Um, and we assign to the signed literal that we have chosen the, this decision level. And then we simply extend our former assignment with this new signed literal. Uh, we get a new assignment and loop again. Okay, now let's actually come to the case where we encountered a conflict. So again, encountering a conflict means we actually have a witness of this conflict and this is a conflict no good that is part of the current assignment. Now, if all decision levels in this conflict no good uh, are zero, we have a, a conflict that indicates uh, unsatisfiability of the problem, and then we return actually the information that, the, that there is no stable model, because all literals uh, of the no good are in the initial stretch that is independent of any choices made, that is just obtained by propagation from the original uh, completion and loop no good. Okay, if this is not the case, then actually our little loop our, with the four, four steps start, right? We take the initial conflict no good, we translate it into a conflict no good that has a UIP, a unique implication point. And also this will indicate where actually we have to back jump to. So this information actually is delivered by conflict analysis. Then we learn, actually we record this uh, transformed uh, conflict no good, we add it to our dynamic no goods, and here we more or less clear the assignment up to the level where we want to back jump to, right? So we remove uh, all literals that have a decision level that is greater than the one we want to jump back to. This is actually happening here. So we, again, we want to, this is the empty assignment, this is where we detected the conflict, we have to jump back here, so we remove all uh, assigned, assigned literals until this point where we have where we want to jump back to and this is expressed here so anyway I think this has to settle in this is perhaps also the, the, the place where you pause the video go back actually to the discussion before uh, and I think this will all become clearer once we once we did an example so okay stay tuned and bear with me just for the record, let me summarize a few observations and commands I made while discussing the algorithm. And first, let's just talk about certain things uh, related to decisions. Now, the first bullet uh, stipulates that whenever we make a decision, whenever we pick an atom and assign it a truth value non-deterministically, this variable should not have had a truth value beforehand. This is expressed by this little expression here. Now the second bullet just um, summarizes again the meaning of the variable dl, which is initially set to zero, and it's used, and I'm just reading now, to count the number of non-deterministically chosen literals in an assignment. What I find more important is this function dlevel, which associates with each signed literal in the assignment the respective decision level, and that is, and nicely formulated here, the value the, var the, the variable dl hat when the signed literal at hand was assigned. So more or less at the beginning, uh, when we just start propagating, all the literals get decision level zero. Then we make the first choice. Then this so this literal gets gets the value one, just as all uh, signed literals that are obtained afterwards by unit propagation. Then the next choice gets level two. All propagated literals get also the same value, etc., etc. Okay, so this is about decisions. Now let's look at conflicts. 
A conflict manifests itself through the violation of a no-good. And in our case, this no-good is either a completion no-good or a dynamic no-good that is one obtained from a previous conflict or from an unfounded set. Okay, and violation of a no-good simply means that the no-good is entirely contained in the current assignment. In other words, all signed literals in the no-good are in the current assignment. A special no-good is one that occurs at decision level zero. And what this actually means is that all signed literals in this conflict no-good are associated with decision level zero. These guys indicate unsatisfiability or in other words, the non-existence of stable models. And we have actually seen this on the abstract algorithms before as well. And there we talked about the top, a top level conflict because more or less uh, decision level zero is also referred to as the top level and sometimes as the root level. And the particular thing keep in mind of this decision level is this is really everything derived from the original problem uh, specification, from the original no goods, because this, this is where I put the footnote. Uh, at that point, no deterministically chosen assumptions have been made, right? Everything depends on the original problem specification. And that's actually why a conflict no good, all of whose side literals are associated with the top level, indicate unsatisfiability. Okay, last but not least, an observation I think I hoped to have made a couple of times now. Uh, the, the conflict no-goods we are actually interested in, and keep in mind uh, delta is the no-good used that is obtained from conflict analysis, is called asserting. Because this guy has a unique implication point, and this actually means that some literal in this no-good is unit resulting at a decision level smaller than the actual decision level. Right? Because keep in mind, there is only one literal left from the uh, decision level at which the conflict occurred. Hence, once you go already one level up, this guy is ready for unit propagation. So, k may be one level up, two level ups, and what we actually look for is the highest level, because there actually we can prune the search space uh, the most severely. So, anyway, after having identified this no good, after having recorded it and back jumping to this level, we are sure that this no good actually gives us new inferences because it can be used right away for unit propagation. And this is actually very different from backtracking because in backtracking, you more or less clear level, look whether you can flip the decision literal. If so, you do that. If not, you go to, you clear the next level, try to flip the decision level. It's always about flipping the decision level. Here, nothing like this is happening, right? There's no flipping of decision levels. We jump back to a certain part. We have new information under our arm, and this information is readily available for new no-good propagation. Okay. Now, there was a lot of hand-waving at the beginning, then a very detailed algorithm, then just some observations that I summarized here. Let's finally look at an example. Last but not least, an example on the working of our CDNL algorithm. So I'll use actually uh, our algorithm to compute a stable model of this logic program here. But I mainly give the logic program here for reference or for some sanity checks back and forth. I will mainly uh, actually concentrate on the resulting no goods. So to trace the algorithm, I came up with a table. So here I give the value of the uh, decision level. Here, these two columns here give uh, the current assignment on the left we have the decision literal, on the right we have the propagated literal, the, the implied literals, and with each uh, propagated literal we have the corresponding no-good that was responsible for its derivation. Okay, if we look at the program, we already see actually there are no facts, so we can't really propagate anything at the outset. The same here, uh, so we have to start with a choice. So the idea is just let's make u true, why not, right? Already looking at the program, right, u appears here. Well, that won't give us any big derivations. Also here u appears in the head, but let's say if we make u true, it can be this rule or this rule, we don't know, so no further inferences are forthcoming. So we do another choice, and this means we again augment 
the variable that keeps the decision level and here the choice is now to make the body of this rule here false. Now this is slightly more interesting in the sense that this is the only rule that could give us w, so more or less if, if this rule becomes inapplicable there's no way to derive w and we should be able to derive that w is false. And this actually can be done. So uh, f of w is unit resulting for this no good here and indeed uh, all but one uh, of the literals in this no good are in the previous assignment. Again, the assignment up to this case contains t of u and f of the set with not x and not y and this literal is all this literal occurs also in, in the no good. Hence all but this literal of the no good are contained in the assignment up to this point. Hence we can deduce the complement of this guy. So of course I now uh, talked about many details and this was just a little bit to warm up because I'm not really want to, I don't want to really explain unit propagation uh, again. But the most important thing to note here is first of all how the assignment grows and with it the decision level and that we keep track of the no goods that were responsible for the, 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 the associated unit resulting literal. So this is very important. Not actually at this level of the algorithm, but later on when we do conflict analysis. That's really important. Okay, anyway, again, in this, at this stage of the algorithm, there's nothing to propagate anymore. So we have to make another choice. We increment the decision level to, tri to, to three. And here the choice actually makes this body false. Now with this body being false, I think you already see that inferences are false coming. So that's the only rule that gives us X. So we can also de derive that x is false and then of course the body that contains x is false and the body that contains x and something else becomes false. So this is something uh, that we can then derive furthermore with um, propag unipropagation on no goods. And again it's more or less the same thingy whenever we have, uh, whenever we look at the associated no good all but, all but the complement of this guy, that all but this guy in this case f of, that, of the body that contains not y is already contained in the assignment and that's the same uh, for this here, right, which is contained here and here's the same, it's contained here. So these three no goods uh, allowed us to produce uh, signed literals uh, and, they, and the, the, the relation that this guy is more or less um, responsible for deriving this guy here are kept track of. And that's very important, again, not now, but later on when we do conflict analysis. So what is important now in our case is if we continue with propagation, I don't want to detail that now, at some point we figure out, and this is what no good propagation does, which we will detail in the next section, that this no good here uh, is violated, hence it, we, we obtain a conflict. And now conflict analysis will start. But first of all, let's check actually that this no good is indeed violated. So we see that T of u is the first decision that we made. Uh, F of the, that the body that contains x is false is here in the assignment, and the body that x and y is false is here in the assignment. Indeed, this no good is completely contained in the assignment, and this indicates um, a conflict. Keep in mind, we call this guy here a conflict no good. And what conflict analysis now does, it takes a conflict no good and translates it into one that contains a unique implication point. So let's actually check whether this no good here contains a unique implication point. Actually, the, the first literal T of U belongs to the first decision level and the other two belong to the third decision level, which is actually the level at which the conflict occurred, the conflict level, if you want. Okay, so there is no unique, unique decision point in this conflict no good. And again, now magic happens, right? And we launch the procedure uh, that does conflict analysis and what it actually will produce, and this will be in the next but one section explained, it, what it produces by current magic is it produces this no good here. First of all, let's check that this no good is also a conflict no good. Well, indeed we have t of u here and f of x here. And indeed there is a unique implication point because only f of x belongs to the level where the conflict occurred. Now this means that the no good, again, 
This no good here allows us to do unit propagation at level 2 because t of u is here, so we could actually uh, just go clear level 3 and at level 2 use this no good to, for unit propagation, but we can also clear in addition level 2 and then actually uh, do unit propagation back on level 1. And of course this is much better because the higher we go when we back jump, the better we, we prune the search tree. Okay, and that's actually what we do. Again, there is a lot of magic at work. So how did, how did this no good here come into being? How did, it, did, did this conflict no good uh, be, be turned in the, in the one we are just looking at? Again, this will be detailed in the next two sections. Let's just assume it's magic. Okay, our magic makes us produce this no good here and actually back jump to level one. That is, we clear level three, we clear level two, because level one is the highest level where this no good here allows us to do unit propagation, where this allows us to, to produce a unit resulting literal. And in our case, well, since t of u is contained here, we produce the complement of f of x, that is t of x. Okay, and again, we just, we have, since this is actually uh, new information, we now uh, apply further unit propagation. We deduce other signed literals, and indeed, just by unit propagation, we end up with a stable model. And this stable model contains u, x, and v. So, admittedly, there is still a lot of magic going on, but I hope you got the flavor, right? So, we more or less start start uh, propagating if we can. Here we can't propagate, so level zero is empty. We do choices, then we propagate, we do choices, we propagate, we do choices, we propagate until we get a conflict. Then we take this conflict, or more, more precisely this conflict no good, and we transform this by magic into a conflict no good that has a unique implication point. In our case, we may obtain this one, then we add this to our dynamic no goods, and we go back to the highest level, so we clear all other levels below, where this no good here allows for unit propagation. Keep in mind, we've been here already, right? So we've been here at level one, but we couldn't do anything beforehand. But now we have actually one more no good in our dynamic no goods, and this guy now allows us to make new inferences so we can derive t of x. And now with t of x, a lot of other things are forthcoming, and we are able to derive the atoms of a stable model. So I hope that this really clarified things again. As I said a couple of times, you may want to go back and forth and, and have the algorithm on one and the example, perhaps also the, the descriptions beforehand. These things fall into place when you look at them uh, and, and, and take different perspectives, right? Believe me on that. And so let's actually look uh, in the next sections how this magic actually is performed that I had to skip now on this level of the algorithmic framework.